Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. You want the latest news in the streets? Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey, tea sippers. I'm um, happy Tuesday. This is like my third video, but I'm honestly back in like my zone. I think I was burnt out for a while and was just over these same repetitive stories, but I'm back in my zone and it's a lot going on. So I gotta break this down. Okay, it's just been announced who was shot at Drake's house. We knew it wasn't Drake, but it's just come out that it was one of Drake's security guards. Um, this is all over CNN, TMZ. It's saying police investigating shooting of security guard outside of Drake's Toronto home. Now, let me play out this clip really quick and I'm gonna come back with what I'm being told and what I'm thinking. Police confirming a shooting occurred outside the home of Canadian rapper Drake in Toronto. This happening overnight in the wake of an escalating beef between Drake and hip hop star Kendrick Lamar. This is the scene outside of Drake's home in the city's Bridal Path neighborhood. Courtesy of our CTV News Chopper, police say a man sustained serious injuries after a shooting outside that home and was taken to hospital. Police also say a suspect fled in a vehicle, but no description has been released. So far, there's no word on whether Drake was at home at the time of the shooting, but we understand from police that he has offered to fully cooperate with them. Joining me now is Mark Mendelson. He is a former homicide detective and he joins us now to discuss the developments in this case. As Mark, we're waiting for more word from police. Uh, details are very scant right now. But what do you make of this shooting? This for our viewers across the country is known as the bridal path this neighborhood it's got a lot of mansions um but it's pretty open it's not as though it's a gated area yeah and good morning marcia you're right it's not a gated area but there are very very large homes in that neighborhood um you know and and, and what goes along with large homes like that is a lot of security cameras um and and other security uh, precautions that are taking place and if you ever uh, had the opportunity to drive past drake's residence you'll notice that there are gates and there are walls and there is a sort of strategically placed trees etc to provide security and there are also uniformed security guards at the residence and it's my understanding from a from a source within toronto police that in fact it is a security guard who is the victim of the shooting who was working at the time. It was described to me as a drive-by shooting. Um, and as you mentioned, there, you know, the police have put out a suspect vehicle. So that's all we really know at this point. As you, as you, as you fairly stated, we don't know if Drake is at home, if he's in the country or wherever. And now what the police are gonna be doing is looking at the motivation behind, uh, behind this shooting. Again, there's lots of security cameras and all kinds of homes around that area. Lots of security guards in other homes as well and patrols. So they may have information of investigative value as well, but they'll be looking for the motivation. And of course, Marcia, in the backdrop of all of this is this sort of feud that's been going on, as you mentioned with, uh, with Lamar, um, in terms of who's dropping songs and who is disrespecting the other one. Uh, and as early as this morning, you know, somebody actually went on Google Maps and uh, uh, re-tagged Drake's residence as Lamar's residence. Um, so it's this feud going on. Now, whether this is all for clicks or for publicity, uh, I mean, no, nobody knows at this point. But it really doesn't take anything more than somebody being offended by what they're seeing or reading uh, to decide that they're going to take th things into, into their own hands. Um, and, and commit this crime. And All right, so you guys just watched that clip and they're saying um, that the security guard was working outside of the gate. He wasn't in the home. Now, remember when I went live a few streams ago, probably like two, three streams ago, and I said that there was a shooting in LA that just happened over the weekend on Saturday and it had to do with the weekend's security guard. Supposedly somebody was also trying to break into the weekend's compound in LA and his security team was shot. Um, let me go ahead and play y'all this news clip in case you missed my live stream. Check this out. HD with detail, Scott. 
Yep, Rachel, this is the home in question. Now, you see the emblem there on the basketball court. That's a record label of the weekend. And then you see the guard shack. You see a, a chair that's uh, uh, toppled over. And then you see what appear to be evidence marks. The guard is shot multiple times outside the Encino mansion of a hip-hop music executive. And the search is on tonight for three suspects linked to what police believe was likely a botched home invasion robbery. KTLA's Chris Wolf is live in Encino with more on the shooting and reaction from neighbors to the increase in violence in the community. Chris? That's right, Cher and Micah. This estate is located at the end of a very long private road. And we're told that the security guard was shot either inside or near his booth, which is on the perimeter of the property. They struck under cover of darkness in a posh neighborhood of Encino, possibly planning to invade the home of a record label executive. Authorities say intruders shot a 37-year-old security guard multiple times when he was either inside or near his booth on the edge of the property. The victim was still able to call 911 shortly before 2.30 a.m. Footage from Sky 5 shows the door to the guard box open and a toppled black chair a few feet from it. The $12 million estate along Jaden Lane is reportedly equipped with a state-of-the-art security system and recording studio. Reports show it belongs to Amir Ismailian, notably associated with EXO Records and also known as Cash EXO. He's worked with several top hip-hop acts and other well-known musicians, including singer-songwriter The Week. An LAPD detective says Ismailian and others were home at the time of the shooting. The victim tells investigators his attackers, three men, wore hoodies and surgical masks. They scattered after opening fire. Should I be concerned? Yes, probably, but I don't tend to stand. All right, so you guys just saw that news clip. And so... um. I find this very interesting and I'm seeing a connection. So last weekend, no pun intended, the weekend security guard was shot. Thank goodness he wasn't killed, but he was shot at his $12 million property um, with people trying to do a home invasion on the weekend. And then this morning, the same thing happens to Drake. Okay. Now, if you guys don't know, EXO and OVO have been beefing for years. And for a while, we thought the beef was over with. If you guys remember three weeks ago, back around April 12th, ASAP Rocky and The Weeknd, they jumped on Metro Boomin and Future Song. But this song was called, We Still Don't Trust You, okay? So that's when The Weeknd was singing that diss towards Drake. So this whole situation is getting really crazy. What I'm, what I'm hearing in the streets of Canada the tea that the Canadians are spilling, they're saying that this shooting is some type of beef between EXO and OVO. So if you guys don't know, Drake and, like I said before, if y'all don't know, Drake and The Weeknd have been beefing off and on for years. And we kind of thought everything had died down until The Weeknd jumped on the We Still Don't Trust You track. So let me go ahead and kind of break down for people who don't know like where this beef stems from and why they're beefing. So a long time ago, like back in like 2010, 2011, uh, 40, who is Drake's producer and, you know, comrade, uh, for lack of a better terms, 40's been around Drake from day one. Like he said in God's plan, if it wasn't for 40, there'd be no me. So 40 has been with Drake from day one. So 40 ended up meeting this young man, um, Abel, who is now The Weeknd, and Abel was just very talented. He was a raw talent. He could sing. He could write. And so they took... Abel, The weekend under their wing, and so 40 ended up introducing him to Drake, and Drake really liked The weekend. He thought he was, you know, just really talented. And so The weekend ended up contributing at least five songs to Drake's, um, one of my favorite Drake albums, which is Take Care. So he helped him write at least five songs on the Take Care album, like Take a Shot, um, Crew Love. Crew Love is one of my songs. Baby loving the crew. They be loving the crew. They be loving the crew. Okay, I can't sing like Weekend, but y'all get the point. That was the jam back in the day, okay? But The Weekend was the one who technically wrote on that song. And so years later, we find out that he did all this writing on the album because he finally just told it all. And this is why that album is more of a singy-songy album. So anyhow, 
OVO basically thought they had it in the bag. And it's Toronto love, man. And that's somebody that I, that I love with all my heart, so I just needed to say that shit. This is him right here. If you need to know what he is, man, OVO XO shit. Future the Prince. They thought, okay, we put you on, I put you on stage with me, I let the world know who you technically are, you know, you, you're you basically Team OVO, you're indebted to us, but the whole time the weekend is really peeping game, and he's seeing how everybody else who's been signed to Drake, they're not really flourishing like that, because again, like I always say, it doesn't make sense to sign to an artist who still wants to be an artist. Party Next Door is very talented, but where is Party Next Door today? So The weekend was like, you know what? Now nah, I'm not going to sign with OVO. And he bounced in 2012 and he wanted he signed with Republic. And Drake was not feeling that. Remember, Drake had sent out this cryptic message back in the day on Twitter. And a lot of people didn't know like what it was about. So Drake basically says, you won't get away with just a thank you. You owe me a favor. And that tweet is still up till this day, okay? He, he posted that December 11th of 2012. Well, that tweet was for The weekend because they did do a lot for The weekend. They gave him visibility. He was on stage rocking with Drake. He thanked Drake for putting him on. How this man is motherfucking Drake. There'd be no motherfucking weekend. There'd be no XO. So please, make some fucking noise for my mentor, my brother. And now all of a sudden you're gonna sign with Republic, which was the best thing for The weekend because now we get to know The weekend for who he is, who, you know, he's a singer and everything else. But it really affected OVO because The weekend went on to make millions of dollars for Republic that technically should have went to OVO because OVO put a lot into The weekend as far as getting him visibility and getting people to know his name. So Drake felt like he lost millions when The weekend turned on him, quote unquote, and went to go sign with Republic. So Drake was definitely in his feelings. So then what does Drake do? After The weekend ends up breaking up with Bella Hadid, all of a sudden, Drake is now allegedly dating Bella Hadid. So then he ends up making this song called Finesse back in 2018. And in Finesse, Drake is basically saying, I want my baby to have your eyes. I'm going against my own advice. Should I go to New York? I can't decide. Y'all remember this damn song, Finesse, okay? Should I do New York? I can't decide. Fashion week is more your thing than mine. So that was Drake in the Finesse song, and clearly he's talking about Bella Hadid. And so The Weeknd definitely felt the way. So the very next year, The Weeknd dropped this song called Lost in the Fire, where this is basically him singing a diss towards Drake. So like I said, all of these guys have been subbing each other for years. You just have to really be on top of it to, you know, pick it out. They all throw Easter eggs in their music. So this is the diss right here towards Drake. And he's basically saying, you know, I want a baby with the right one because I never want to hide one, which is, you know, goes back to the whole Pusher T blasting Drake for hiding Adonis in the story of Adadon. So this situation with Drake and The Weeknd goes deep. So once The Weeknd sung that, Drake dropped another song called The War. And he was basically like, oh, you know, that was my nigga. We need to sit down and talk and hash it out. So a lot of people thought that, okay, everything was, you know, on the up and up. And Drake even did an interview saying that, you know, they spent all this time beefing when EXO and OVO could have been a big thing. They're both from Canada. They're both talented. Here's the clip right here. That we probably wasted seven years not communicating with each other when we had something beautiful going on. You know, like OVO EXO still could have been think, yeah. a thing. All right, so you guys just saw that clip. So now we fast forward to today and I'm seeing Drake's security guard shot and then last weekend the weekend security guard got shot OVO versus EXO are me and the Canadian tea sippers reaching I don't know you tell me but the whole situation is just insane either way I just hope like again all of this stuff dies down and it stops getting crazy out here but I just wanted to talk to you guys about this. Now that we know who was shot on Drake's property, it's definitely telling me that this situation's a lot deeper than anybody could imagine. So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Let me know your thoughts on this entire situation concerning The weekend and Drake and both their security guards being shot less than a week apart. 
And did you know anything about The weekend and Drake's beef in the past? Is this new to you? Um, so let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. I look forward to reading y'all's comments down below. Make sure you guys hit this video with a like. Feel free to share the video. Most importantly, make sure you still subscribe to the channel. And I will talk to y'all later. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.